how are you doing welcome to another video of coding in al programming and today we are going to look at how to use the commit behavior attribute and this is the first video of the 30 days of al series that will run from the beginning of the month to the end of the month so we'll try and post a video a day for the 30 days so if you have a video suggestion of a topic that you'd like covered please uh, share it in the comments so that we can be able to um, look at it and maybe post a video within the 30 day period <music> So um, before I look at the we look at the commit behavior attribute uh, since it's affecting the commit function. So this is how AL runs. We usually have uh, maybe a transaction, a transaction one, for instance. Uh, with all, maybe you are running, for instance, uh, uh, posting a sales invoice. So when the execution of this uh, sales invoice is, uh, uh, the posting is triggered, the right transaction uh, will start. And this is transaction one that will be able to start. And at the end of the transaction, the records are committed to the database. So we run, maybe you're posting a sales invoice, we run the transaction, and then we commit to the database. So in between, we have several tables being affected. We have code units being affected at the same time. We do have so, uh, so many functions running in between that particular transaction. But at times, we usually need to run code in separate, separate transactions, where we have subdivided the code into maybe one or two transactions. Uh, for instance, we need to make sure that um, if an error is generated in the second transaction, it's, it doesn't affect whatever happened in the first transaction. Okay, for instance, if we are still posting a sales invoice, so maybe we need to, we have a part of validating, maybe validate the customer, and this part, see here we have maybe on before sales invoice on B4 post sales invoice. We validate a customer and uh, we'd like this particular transaction to be separated as transaction one. And then so how do we make it work? So we call the commit method at this point. And then now a new transaction will be triggered. That is transaction two before now another commit is triggered and all that. So the commit function is the one that will separate the transactions. And how we call the commit, we just specify the commit. And uh, in the event that uh, we have already called the commit, if there's an error in transaction two and the code that is running in transaction two, then the code will not be affected or rather whatever was committed here will remain so it means that nothing will be affected uh, while, while we are running transaction two okay uh, committing a transaction is also uh, performance heavy so we should only commit when we need it so only use the commit um, function when you really need because you are basically triggering another right transaction and you commit every change you make sure that everything is committed and you end that transaction and you create another transaction so it it is sort of performance heavy we should not use it as much but we can control the commit behavior in our methods and there is an attribute known as the commit behavior attribute and it has two okay let me just uh, create a procedure to test the commit behavior so here is a procedure 
And for instance, this procedure could be an event publisher. T event publisher. That is an integration event. So we are not including any sender. But now we we publish our event. So we have the integration event attribute, which basically specifies that the method is published as an integration event type. And um, we are adding our code, or we are allowing somebody else to subscribe to this um, code unit, or, or to this, uh, to this uh, event that we have published. So this subscriber, who is subscribing to our code unit so we are subscribing to publish our event there's no element name and uh, you're skipping everything so we we are subscribing to this commit behavior so uh, so do something do something on publish our event. We are subscribing to this um, uh, uh, method that we have published. So what can happen here? There is a possibility that if we could be having maybe, or the subscriber, this is now at the discretion of the developer, they can subscribe and maliciously just add a commit here. So they have subscribed nothing else they have just added a commit so this is similar to adding a commit to your code directly so when the developer or the subscriber of your event that you have published adds this commit it means that now your transaction will be written in different transactions and if there is an error generated in between whatever was committed is already committed and it can be a very very risky um, control in your application just in case the uh, subscriber of your code unit uh, does the wrong thing then uh, a lot can can go wrong in your application that maybe requires all the transactions or or the document to run in one right transaction so how do we mitigate this that's when we now add the commit behavior attribute which we specify that we can either say it's an error if somebody uh, specifies a commit it must be okay it throws an error so when you say it's an error it means you don't need them to specify a commit but we do have the other one that is ignore so if somebody specifies the commit in their method then you just ignore that particular commit so that now the method will basically not or um, uh, no commit function will be called adding this attribute to your publisher method i, th I think is, is should be important especially for if, uh, scenarios where you know you don't need any commit in your right transaction just to make sure that nobody adds a commit behavior and especially for posting routines and all that you we we can basically make use of this commit behavior attribute to specify if the commit is allowed within the scope of the method and the scope is the method when it's subscribed to. Tell me what you think about this commit behavior. Is it something that you can use or you still feel that if somebody calls a commit to your, um, uh, when they subscribe to your published event, if it's okay, yeah, and I think we can uh, be able to see what happens. So I will see you in day two of 30 days of AL programming. See you tomorrow. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like, subscribe, and ring the notification bell so that you don't miss the next one.